We'd like to give you an opportunity to worship God this morning with your finances by giving back a portion of what God has entrusted to you. Tithing is an act of worship, and as followers of Jesus, tithing is an act of worship that we are called to do. Tithes allow us, as a church, to reach out and connect people to Jesus. So to give this morning, you can go and visit thegatheringottawa.com slash giving. Thank you for giving. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to The Gathering Online. We exist to connect people to the love of Jesus. And we're so glad you're kicking off your new year here with us. I hope you had a great Christmas and that the holidays are going well so far. I'm loving the time with my new family and this year it's going to be a gooder, I have no doubt. I hope you all can say the same. If you are tuning in for the first time after joining us on Christmas Eve, welcome. If you're here just because you're trying something new, welcome. Maybe your New Year's resolution was to check out church. Well done. Join us in person next week. We'd love to have you at St. FX High School in Riverside South at 1030 every Sunday morning. I want to say a big thank you. We had a wonderful Christmas Eve service last week. Brayden and the worship team were phenomenal. We had a great message from Jeff. Karen led an awesome time for the kids. I loved every moment of our service, which all came together with the help of so many faithful volunteers, from Crystal and all of her help with setup and decorating, to Craig who ran Tech World, to Paul who busted out his truck and trailering skills with our new vehicles. We're so grateful to all of you. And to my new Scott family who managed to get roped into helping too. Man, I love all you guys. Thank you all for all you did and continue to do in helping us to reach people to the love of Jesus. We can't do it without you. Okay, a few businessy things. There are a couple of important things that I want you to know. One of which is that we are having a membership workshop called Gathering 101 coming up on January 29th following the service. You are welcome to attend even if you are not all that interested in membership, but if you are newer to the church and want to learn more about our church, this is a great meeting for you to attend and obviously we'll feed you lunch. So mark your calendar for the last Sunday of January for that Gathering 101 membership workshop. I'm filming this over the Christmas holidays and it's a little loud here because the kids are loud. I'm filming, be quiet. <sighs> Another thing to note is that we are looking for some elder nominations. We are looking to replace one or two of our outgoing elders as their season comes to an end on the board. So we are inviting the congregation to participate by prayerfully considering and submitting nominations of potential candidates for the elders and nominations team to consider. Go to our website, gatheringottawa.com slash nominations is where you'll find all the information you need to make a nomination. And if you have any questions, reach out because we'd love to chat. Okay, that's all I've got on my list to tell you. Let's jump into some worship and then our lead pastor Jeff will be here to let you know what's coming up next. Have a great new year, everyone. Plan to join in person next week. You know why I want you there, but I'll tell you anyways, it's because I miss you. See you soon. How great this love Oh, it's moving all my mountains This perfect love Is casting out my fear How great this love Oh, it welcomes me like family And anywhere I go It meets me there
it's not what I got And he is just Yet oh so kind What I deserve It's not what I find What more could I say about him My God is love Gathering Church family and happy new year. I hope that you had an awesome Christmas break and an awesome Christmas and that you're feeling rested and ready to enter into the week ahead as we launch into 2023 together. I, I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about what God has in store for us as a church in this coming year. It kind of feels like this past year, 2022, was about kind of getting reorganized and reestablished as a church coming out of COVID. And hopefully this year, we get to build on that and see what God has in store for us together as we move into the future together, being faithful to Him and His call on our lives together as a church. And so I'm pumped. I'm excited about what He has in store for us. And I hope that you are too. This morning, as you know, we are online only, which means we get to have a guest preacher who isn't from Ottawa. Dr. Steve Brown, who is from Vancouver, is going to be bringing the message, and I'm going to introduce him to you in just a moment, but it's going to be awesome. You're going to love him. You're going to be encouraged greatly this morning by what it is that he has to say. First, though, I want to let you know about a New Year's series that we're going to be launching into next week, Sunday, January the 8th, as we regather together as a church family at the school. It's a series called, a three-week series called Follow, and it's just all about following Jesus, what it looks like to follow Jesus in 2023. And specifically, we're going to talk about three goals, three specific goals that we want to orient our lives around as we follow Jesus together. I've talked about these goals a lot in the past. I'll talk about them a lot in the future because they are core, central to who we are as a church as we follow Jesus together. Those three goals are this. If you're not familiar with them, you need to be reminded, here's what they are. Number one, being with Jesus. We want to commit to orienting our lives around being with Jesus and spending time with him in his word and in prayer. We're going to talk about that in week one. What does it look like to be more intentional about being with Jesus in 2023? Second week is about becoming like Jesus, orienting our lives around becoming like Christ and being transformed by the Holy Spirit through the community that God has placed us in. We're going to talk about what that looks like and how we can be more intentional about that in 2023. And then the last commitment we want to orient our lives around is this. It's doing what Jesus said, actually being obedient to live into his teaching and uh, committing ourselves to actually making a Jesus-sized difference in the world. Those are the three things 
Three commitments we want to be intentional to orient our lives around in 2023. Being with Jesus, becoming like Jesus, and doing what he said to do. And so we're going to spend uh, three weeks focusing in on those three, uh, three things as we talk about following Jesus in 2023. You're not going to want to miss this critical series as we launch into the New Year's together. Really hope that you'll make it a priority to be with us starting next Sunday, January the 8th, in person at St. FX High School as we worship Jesus together and as we open the scriptures together and as we consider what it is to follow Jesus together as a church community. Really hope that we'll see you next Sunday. This morning, though, as I mentioned, we're in for a real treat. We've got Dr. Steve Brown joining us this morning all the way from Vancouver, bringing a really special New Year's message called Six Keys for Your 2023. Now, many of you are familiar with Dr. Steve Brown because he's actually brought the word the last couple years at the end of the year, a New Year's message at the end of the year. This has become a little bit of a tradition for us as a church family. Dr. Steve Brown, if you don't know, he's the president of Arrow Leadership. Arrow Leadership's a leadership, Jesus-centered leadership organization that operates around the world. It's been in operation for 30 years now. I actually graduated from Arrow Leadership in 2019. That's how I got introduced to this ministry was by participating in its program. That's how I got to meet Dr. Steve Brown. Um, it's an amazing organization. I've never seen anything quite like it around the globe. And Dr. Steve Brown is the president of this amazing organization. And I'm actually in a cluster currently with uh, Steve and have been for the last couple of years. He's a friend, a mentor of mine, and someone that I just am greatly encouraged by every time that I connect with him. A couple other things I want to let you know about him. Steve is the author of a couple books. I've got them here. Number one, Jesus Centered is his latest. It's a fantastic book. Uh, I've got a couple in my office. If you're curious about that, would encourage you to pick that up. He was talking about what it means to focus on Jesus in a distracted world. Another book that Steve has written is called Leading Me. Leading Me. The most difficult person to lead often is ourselves, isn't it? It's easier if you're in the workplace to lead other people, but sometimes uh, leading ourselves is the most difficult person to lead. And so he's a great man, godly man, and you're going to be blessed this morning as you hear from him. He's based uh, near Vancouver. He's married to Lee for 25 years, and they have three adult children, young adult children, and uh, just so excited for what it is that God has to say to us this morning as we launch into this new year together through Steve. Before Steve brings the word, though, why don't I pray for us, uh, just that we be open to what it is that God wants to say to us through his word and through Steve this morning. Let's pray together. Well, Lord Jesus, we are so grateful uh, for your faithfulness over this past year. And we're so excited about what it is that you long to do in us and through us in the year 2023. And as we take some time this morning on this New Year's Day to consider uh, what it is that you might want to do in the year ahead, six keys for your 2023, we pray that you'd open our hearts to what it is that you'd have to say to us that would be open to hearing from you this morning and not just hearing from you, but ultimately putting into practice what it is that you would have to say to us, actually living out your truth in this year that lies ahead of us. Pray that you'd speak to us now as you um, bring, as, as Steve brings the word, as you speak through him to us. We open ourselves to you and your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. It's great to be with you, the Gathering Church, and to be on the starting line of 2023 together. Thanks, Pastor Jeff, for this opportunity and invitation. I'm looking forward to journeying through this service with you. As you look at this new year, how are you feeling about it? Maybe you're optimistic. Sometimes when the calendar turns over, I look, at, look ahead and see a blank canvas. It's like a reset. And I'm excited about the opportunities and possibilities and want to pursue them with vigor. Maybe you're optimistic. Maybe, though, you're cautious right now because you see chaos. You see change and challenge and complexity, not only in our world, but also maybe in your own life. And you're starting this year with some caution inside. Optimistic, cautious. Maybe you're approaching this year feeling it's already daunting. And there is difficulties in your own life, difficulties in the people's lives around you. Maybe you're feeling deflated or discouraged and the year hasn't even gotten going. 
whether you're feeling optimistic, whether you're feeling cautious, or whether the prospect of a new year feels daunting to you, I want to point you to six keys for your 2023. And five of the six keys are based in two simple verses of Scripture. They're found in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 and 14. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. We're going to find five keys I believe are going to help you whether you're trying to survive 2023 or whether you want to thrive in 2023. 1 Corinthians is a letter in the New Testament. It's written by Paul to a church that he helped to start. And 1 Corinthians chapter 16 is the very last chapter in this long letter that he's written to this church. And the letter has a number of different components to it. It starts out with concern about division because within the church there's division and Paul's speaking to that. There's sin within this church and Paul's speaking to that. There's issues and questions around sexual morality, and Paul speaks to that. There's questions around how a church should function uh, in a healthy way, and Paul speaks to that. Paul lays down the cornerstone of the faith in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, which is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And in this final chapter, Paul is kind of giving his last summary words. And these words are incredibly important for us because that church was navigating how do we be a healthy church in the midst of a very uh, diverse and, in a sense, uh, culture that's chasing after idols in which we're a minority. So that's the, the foundation for these two verses that have five keys to your 2023. So let's read these two verses together. 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 and 14. Here they are. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. We're going to unpack these five keys to 2023 one at a time. The first sentence and phrase in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13, is be on your guard. Uh, Some other versions uh, translate this to be watchful or keep your eyes open. And when I read this verse, I think back to my minor hockey days, ice hockey. And I remember uh, learning early on uh, how to skate and how to stick handle the puck up the ice. And skating and stick handling at the same time is kind of two actions at once. It's complicated. And most young people, when they're starting out, keep focused on the stick and puck in front of them. They're looking down all the time. And once they master that, the ideal is they begin to look up and look around to see what's going on around them. And it's important to do that because In those early years of learning how to play ice hockey, uh, there's no body contact. But that's introduced around 13, 14 years old in most leagues. And if the player is still looking down all the time, looking at their skates and looking at the stick in front of them, they miss what's going on around them on the ice. They miss the opportunities and the possibilities and who they can pass the puck to. And they also miss the potential of running into a big defenseman who's maybe spurted faster in puberty than they have. And that big defenseman is looking at this player who's maybe smaller, looking at their feet, not looking what's coming at them. And then with that body contact rule, there's a body check there that the player didn't even see coming. And they can be flat on their back. And the puck goes off to the sides. Well, in Bible times, cities were protected usually by a wall. And that wall was guarded uh, with guards on top who would be watchmen. And the job of a watchman was to be looking around outside the city to see what's going on, to see when there might be good news that's approaching the city, and to also 
See when there might be bad news approaching the city. Maybe there's another army or some raiders that are approaching the city, some dangers that are approaching the city. And the job of the watchman is to alert the city so they can be prepared for what's coming at them, whether it's good or whether it's bad. And the watchman is to be vigilant in looking, to stay awake, to be alert. And when you apply, whether it's ice hockey or this idea of the watchman on the city wall to you and me in 2023, we need to stay on our guard. We need to be spiritually awake. We need to be watching what's going on around us. And with a positive lens on things, we need to be watching for what God might be doing and asking our, ourselves the question, what is God doing right now? Where is he at work? And how should I be joining him in his work? And we need to be attentive to ask that question, to look around, to see what's around us. We also need to be on our guard and to be watching for the negative side, the dangerous side. And that can actually start happening inside of us. And we can have perhaps thoughts in our head that are negative, even toxic, that if we let those stay in our heads, those negative thoughts, those toxic thoughts take root and then take ownership. And what goes on in our head impacts the rest of who we are and how we act. We need to be attentive to what's going on inside of us and what's going on inside of our heads. Our thoughts impact how we live and how we function every day. And if we let things that are negative, uh, things that aren't good, aren't right, aren't truthful, reside in our head and grow in our head, that will take us to a bad place. And if that's the case, we need to, as 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So we're not only watching what God might be doing around us so we join him, we're paying attention to what's going on inside us, and we also need to be on our guard to what the evil one might be doing. We're not to be paranoid of the evil one, but we are to be alert and to be aware because the evil one is looking for places to divide, to destroy, to get a foothold, to, to start a lie or a mistruth, to uh, be a, a, a prowling lion looking for someone to devour. That's from 1 Peter 5 verse 8. So the evil one is also at work and we're to resist the evil one but we can't resist until we're aware of what the evil one might be doing. So we're being vigilant. We're being watchful, spiritually awake. We're putting on the armor of God. Ephesians 6 talks about putting on the armor of God, recognizing there's a spiritual battle and that God's given us armor to put on. That's one of the ways that I start my day every day is by praying on the armor of God. Uh, I pray on the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness. I buckle on the belt of truth, take up the shield of faith to uh, guard me from the fiery darts of the evil one, and take up the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. And I ask God to help me to share the gospel of peace as I come and go with my feet. So this first key to 2023 is to be on your guard, to be awake, to be alert, to be vigilant to what God might be doing, to what's going on inside us, and to the evil one working around us. The second key to 2023 is to stand firm in the faith. Whatever's going on for you, stand firm in the faith. Whether you are on your own, stand firm in the faith. Whether you're in the midst of disappointment, stand firm in the faith. Whether you're in disillusionment, stand firm in the faith. Whether you're in prosperity or abundance, stand firm in the faith. Whether you're the only Jesus follower at home or at school or at work, stand firm in the faith. In 2 Samuel, there's a description of David's mighty warriors, uh, David's 30 mighty men. And one of those mighty men is named Shammah. And it says in 2 Samuel uh, 23, verse 11, 
talking about Shammah, when the Philistines banded together at a place there was a field full of lentils, Israel's troops fled from them. Everybody took off, except for Shammah. Shammah took his stand in the middle of the field. He defended it, and he struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. Even on his own, when everyone else had left, Shammah was standing firm. And as you think about standing firm in the faith, remember it's not just about you standing firm, it's you standing firm in the faith. In your faith of who God is, A.W. Tozer says the most important thing about us is what comes into our minds when we think about God. And we need to have a bigger, fuller, clearer vision of who God is that we can have faith in who he is. One of the things that I've been doing over the last year is seeking to remind myself of a characteristic or attribute of God for each letter of the alphabet and to learn those attributes and to keep repeating them and in a sense praying them that I would be standing firm in the faith of who God is. So I'm remembering that God is my advocate, that he's Abba Father, that he's almighty, that he's the bread of life where my sustenance comes from, that he's my counselor, that he's compassionate, that he's my comforter, that he's my defender, that he's from everlasting to everlasting, that he's my fortress, that he's good, that he's my guide, that he's my helper. And the list can go on through the alphabet. But I'm trying to train myself and remember and pray with my faith in who God is. The second part of standing firm in the faith is standing firm in the faith of what God has done. And 1 Corinthians 15, Paul argues strongly and unreservedly of what God has done by overcoming and paying the debt for sin and overcoming the grave. Uh, Paul writes in verse 57 of chapter 15 that God gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have faith in what God has done and we also have faith in what God promises for the future. 1 Peter 1 says that we have a living hope, an inheritance that will not perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for us. Those are promises about the future. Jesus is coming back. All the things that are messed up and mixed up are going to be transformed and changed into God's ways. So as you stand firm in the faith, may your faith in God and who he is grow. May your faith in what God has done grow. And may your faith in God's promises grow. The third key for 2023 follows after beyond your guard, stand firm in the faith. It's to be courageous. And we're gonna start this key with a video clip from Charlotte's Web. How can he be in every cornfield? It can't be the same guy. It can't be. He's wearing the same hat. I'm telling you, he is following us. I hate that guy. <laughs> I have got to get some guard, Owen. All right, all right, all right. This is crazy. There's two of us, right? Yeah. Oh. Trust me, there's two of us. And there's only one of him. I, I don't know, man. He scares me. He really does. Just think about that corn. Yeah. Corn. The corn. Corn. All right, let's, let's do it. it. Let's do it. Oh. Go! Oh. 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 Man, Woo. he is good. I bet he's laughing at us. Don't look at him. Don't even give him the satisfaction. Just think about something else. The scarecrows that scared off the crows are not just real for those crows, but they're real for us as well. All of us can be overwhelmed by giants or scarecrows that we face. Maybe it's a person that stirs fear in us. Maybe it's a situation. Maybe it's um, something we, we know we should do, whether it's to take a risk, whether it's to speak up or stand up or to listen and ask for help. All of us can have scarecrows that, in a sense, undermine, deflate our courage. 
Courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is pressing on in the midst of fear. And my definition of spiritual courage is choosing to follow Jesus even when your knees are knocking. Choosing to follow Jesus even when your knees are knocking. As you choose to follow Jesus, I want to give you some tools that might help you with courage in the year ahead. The first one is a prayer from my friend Mark Buchanan. And the prayer is this, fear of blank, leave me, peace of God, fill me. Fear of blank, fill in the blank, leave me, peace of God, fill me. That prayer can help you get rid of the fear and focus on God and his peace with you. Second tool would be to remember. Remember God's faithfulness in scripture, in your own life. Can you think back even this last year how God was faithful in his provision or in his promises or in his protection or in his presence? It's not that God's gonna act the same way in different circumstances all the time, but God is always the same. And if we can remember his faithfulness from the past, it can fuel us with courage for the future. The third tool is community. And having community, uh, people around us, where we break the power of our fears and we bring other people into our fears. And leaning into a brother or a sister or a friend in Christ to share and to give us courage. The fourth tool is choosing to trust. Choosing to trust God even though your knees are knocking. David, King David in Psalm 56 verse three says this, when I am afraid, I choose to put my trust in you. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Notice that David didn't say if, but he said when I'm afraid. And there's this act of God, I choose to trust you with, and then fill in the blank. Maybe it's a person, maybe it's a situation, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's your health. God, I choose to trust you with blank. Giving God, the one who's able, your burden. Courage is incredibly important, and not only having courage for ourselves, but being a courage giver to others. Everyone I talk to needs courage in some area of their life. Maybe your 2023 focus needs to be being a courage giver to the people around you. The fourth key from this passage for your 2023 is to be strong. And to be strong sounds like you should be able to pull up your socks, uh, dig deep, uh, find your reserve um, to overcome, to press on, to press through. Um, after all, you can hear from a lot of different places that you've got it in you, uh, you're enough. And I wanna pause you there because I've recognized that on my own, I'm not enough. On my own, I'm not enough to stand before a holy God. On my own, I'm not enough to stand against uh, the evil one. On my own, I'm not enough to press through some of the gigantic challenges that have been and might be before me. The good news about walking with Jesus and following Jesus is that the be strong isn't something that you do on your own. The be strong is God with you and God in you. Let's take a look at Peter for a moment. Remember when Peter denied and disowned Jesus right before Jesus' crucifixion? Uh, Peter did that without people of power around him. It was just people standing around and they asked him, don't you belong with this Jesus guy? And Peter three times denied even knowing him. But you see a little bit later, in Acts chapter four, you see a very different Peter. You see a strong Peter. And what's happened is Peter has healed a lame man and everyone's seen it. And the religious powers are wanting to shut down Peter from talking about this because they don't want more people to follow after Jesus. So they put Peter in jail and they bring him before the powers that be because of course, Peter's going to buckle, right? He's gonna 
say he'll be quiet. He won't talk anymore. He's going to do what he did before, but he doesn't. It says, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this. You and all the people know this. It's by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, whom you've crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. A very different response. And Peter doubles down and he says, salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven except for Jesus given to mankind by which we must be saved. And this new Peter blew the minds of the religious leaders. And here's what they said. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note. What did they take note of? They took note that these men had been with Jesus. So there are two things that transformed Peter from being somebody who buckled to be somebody who was strong. First, he was filled by the Holy Spirit, God's life in him, working through him, an inexhaustible power of God inside Peter, making him bold. One of the prayers I pray every morning is, God, I don't have what it takes to navigate this day with strength. You are my strength. You are the source of strength in my life. Would you fill me by your spirit? Live your life in and through me and produce fruit in me that would bring glory to you and that would bless others and that would bless me. The Holy Spirit in us gives us strength. And I wanna share one more verse with you about being with Jesus. Psalm 16 verse eight is one of my favorites. Here's what it says. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Where are your eyes focused? Your eyes need to be focused on Jesus, on the Lord who is at your right hand. He is with you. The fifth key for your 2023, the last phrase, last sentence, in this passage is do everything in love. Do everything in love. So stand on your guard in love. Stand firm in the faith in love. Be courageous in love. Be strong in love. Do everything in love. And our example of love, of course, is Jesus, who demonstrated love in radical ways, uh, through servanthood, through sacrifice, through suffering. And we're to follow after Jesus' example. We're to love one another as he has loved us. So everything we do, we're to do in love. It is the sentence that holds together these verses, that holds together actually the outflow of our faith. So as you look at your family, your workmates, your schoolmates, your neighbors, your community, the least, the last, the lost, the broken people around you, do everything in love. May your words be in love. May your social posts be in love. May your actions be in love. I have a mentor, had a mentor, Evan, Evan Headley, who lived to over 100 years old. And I would often call him for advice. And I remember calling him at one point and asking him what he'd do different in his life. And at 100, still sharp as a tack, he said, that's easy. I'd love people more. We need to be known, church, brothers and sisters, for our love. Our love for God, our love for one another, and a love for the people around us. We need to do everything in love. I started with the focus on six keys for your 2023. And in this passage, 1 Corinthians 16, we've identified five of them. To be on your guard, to stand firm in the faith, to be courageous, to be strong, to do everything in love. 
Is there one of those that you need to hang on to, to hold on to, to focus in on as this year begins? I pray that there is, that God would bring to mind one, at least one of these uh, phrases in these two verses that you need to hold on to and focus on to. But I want to leave you with the sixth key for your 2023. And I share this poem at this time of year regularly. It's a poem that's from Minnie Haskins. It called, it's called God Knows. And Minnie Haskins' poem, God Knows, was made famous by a young, the story goes, a young Princess Elizabeth. Princess Elizabeth, who was a teenager, I believe, back in 1939, gave to her father, King George, this poem because she thought it was significant and would help him as he addressed at Christmas the Commonwealth countries who in 1939 were on the precipice of what would become World War II. And he wanted to give hope and help to his people. And this poem does that, not only back then, but for 2023. Here's what this poem is called. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And the man at the gate replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. The poem finishes, So I went forth and finding the hand of God trod gladly into the night. This poem is a reminder that the safest way to journey into the unknown is with your hand in God's hand. And this sixth key of 2023 is really the foundational key, is to put your hand into the hand of God. Because whether you're feeling optimistic or cautious or overwhelmed and daunted by the year ahead that's just started, walking with the hand of God in your hand is a game changer, is a difference maker. And you can do that today. Isaiah 41, 13 says the same words of the poem in a different way. The passage reads this, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. I encourage you, foundational to 2023, is to put your hand into the hand of God. The God who says, do not fear, I will help you. The God who desires to walk with you every step of whatever unfolds in the year ahead. Let me pray. Lord, I do thank you for this opportunity to be at the starting line together of 2023, a new year. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that they would be on their guard that they would stand firm in the faith, that they would be courageous, that they would be strong, that they do everything in love and that they would walk every moment of this year with their hand in yours. Bless them and protect them, I pray in Christ's name, amen. Well, thanks Steve uh, for bringing us a great message as we launch into the new year together on this New Year's day. I, I loved the challenge that Steve gave us at the end. I loved the whole message, but specifically, I loved that last challenge that he gave us, to put our hands in God's hand, to let God hold our hands, to trust him, essentially, with our lives. And as we wrap up our time together, I, I wonder for you what that might look like, if there's a specific area of your life where you're really struggling to trust God in. Maybe for you, it has to do with your kids and trusting God with your kids as we enter into 2023. Or maybe it has to do with your marriage and trusting God with your struggling marriage. Or maybe it has to do with something at work. Maybe there's uncertainty in the future about your work and your job and you're not entirely sure as you enter into this year what the year holds. Or maybe there's something to do with your health that you're struggling to trust God with? What, what area of your life do you need to trust God with? What does it look like for you to put your hand in God's hand as we enter in to 2023? You know, 1 Peter 2 verse 7, Peter says to give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. 
Do you believe it? Do you believe that he cares for you? Do you believe that you can trust him with your life? You can. And it's the only way that 2023 is going to be what God wants it to be. If you learn to trust in God with all your cares and anxieties, knowing that he cares for you. If you can learn, if we can learn together as a church family to put our hand in God's hand and to learn to walk with him through our life. I wonder what this might look like for you to be more intentional about this in 2023. I want to pray for you. I know Steve just prayed for us, but as a church family, I just want to spend some time praying for us together, that we, we would be people who learn to put our hand in God's hand in 2023. Let's pray. God, we come to you as people who have all sorts of cares and concerns and worries, anxieties in our life, things that prevent us often from trusting you with our life. We sometimes think that we can control our lives better than you can if we would just fix this or make that go away or solve that problem or whatever. And so at the beginning of 2023, God, we just want to take a moment and say that we trust you with our lives. And we intentionally put our hand in your hand and let you lead us, let you guide us through all the uncertainty, through all the unknown that 2023 is bringing into our lives as we just don't know the future. We don't know what's to come, what's to happen. We trust in you. And we thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross for our sin so that we can trust in you because we know that you came after us, that you love us, that you pursued us with your love and we can trust you with our lives. Continue to teach us what that looks like to trust in you and what it is that you've already accomplished for us on the cross and in rising again. We say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, thanks so much for carving out some time on your New Year's Day or whenever it is that you're watching uh, to be with us this morning. I hope that you've been encouraged as you think about the year ahead and what God may want to do uh, in and through you and through our church together uh, in the year 2023. Again, I want to encourage you, remind you to join us in person next Sunday at St. FX High School. We're going to be launching into this new series called Follow. You're not going to want to miss it. Critical series for our church families. We consider what it is to follow Jesus together. But other than that, I just hope that you have an awesome rest of your day, an awesome New Year's Day, just uh, celebrating, being lazy, eating lots of good food, reading, watching movies, doing whatever it is that you do on this holiday. Have an awesome New Year's and we will see you next Sunday in person. Happy New Year's. have my heart and I am yours forever you are my strength God of grace and power and everything you hold in your hand still you make time for me I can't understand so I'll praise you, God of earth and sky. How beautiful is your unfailing love. Unfailing love. And you never change, God. You remain the Holy One. My unfailing love. Unfailing love. You are my one I hold on to. You are my song, and I sing for you. And everything you hold in your hand, still you make time for me. I can't understand, so
Sky. 